We have our first, uh, the writer for Pack to uh, Pack to the Future dot com and Packers Talk dot com. We are going to be talking to Green Bay's Pack Green Bay Packers writer Ralph Mantini. What's going on, Ralph? Hey, what's going on, guys? We Great are, to be with you. Oh, we're happy that you're joining us. I know it's been very very busy the last couple of weeks. The Packers made some moves. Uh, their draft. So uh, before we get into the how's your family doing? Uh, <laughs> we're doing, we're doing okay, man. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a nice a neighborhood here. You know, I got a lot of space around me. So, uh, fortunately for me, I don't live in any congested quarters. And so, uh, I got food in the refrigerator. So everything is just fabulous right now. Well, you're the voice and the ears of the Packers fans. And what are the thoughts of some of the Packers fans when they moved up from 30 to 23 or 24, right? It was 24? 26. I'm sorry. 30 to 26, moving up right. to get a backup quarterback who is probably going to be Aaron Rodgers' successor, uh, Jordan oh, oh. Love. There, there's no doubt about it. I mean, when you trade up to get a quarterback, to draft a quarterback in the first round, uh, you're not taking him to be a career backup. He is going to be the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers. Now, whether or not he ends up being uh, somebody that even plays close to that level, that remains to be seen. But I would say that overall, just everybody was shocked by the move. I mean, you know, I've been writing about this for months. People have been tweeting about it. They've been talking about it. I'm talking about Packer fans. And really, I mean, we, we knew there was a possibility maybe, but nobody really took it seriously. And, you know, here's another thing. You know, Aaron Rodgers went on the Pat McAfee show. I think it was about a day before, or maybe the day of the uh, first day of the draft. And they put him on the spot and asked him, you know, what, what do you think the Packers are going to do? And, you know, he came out and said, well, you know, it would be nice if they got me another weapon or two. Now, that just shows you that, you know, he didn't even have a any idea of what was going to take place. And so uh, I would say overall, just everybody was floored by what took place. And I have to say, it took me like me personally, it took me about three days to really come wow. to terms with uh, with what was going on, because I am a huge Aaron Rodgers fan. I, I do think he still has a lot to offer. And, you know, hey, listen, uh, overall, though, if I'm going to judge the draft, I really, you know, looking back now. I really don't have a huge problem with them uh, trading up to get this quarterback, because quite frankly, you take a look at the quarterback class from 2020 and it's not that good. I mean, outside of the top, you know, three or four guys, there are not a lot of franchise or I should say potential future uh, fr franchise quarterbacks, NFL quarterbacks out there. And so I understand the thinking. Aaron Rodgers is 36 years old. And, you know, this is a smart move for the future. And now it's going to ruffle some feathers. But what I had a problem with is they had a need, a distinct need at wide receiver. And this was, you know, supposedly, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, down the road. But, you know, judging on, you know, some of these guys that, that were coming out this year, this was, you know, one of the all time wide receiver classes. And for them not to come away with one receiver with their picks in, in, in the draft, I mean, to me, that that was even more shocking than them trading up for Jordan Love. And, you know, so, uh, you know, they, they have they, there's a method to their madness. I, I get what they're doing. Um, and and so there, there's just a lot of stuff going on beneath the surface that, you know, we're just not aware of as far as, you know, the relationship between Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers. So but uh, but, yeah, I, I would say overall, a lot of Packer fans, most Packer fans. We're just shocked with what happened. How long do you think the developmental process will be for Jordan Love? And also, how do you think he will fit with Matt LaFleur's scheme offensively? Well, basically, Jordan Love is very raw. He is the type of player who is athletic. He's got a natural throwing motion. He's got a great arm. He can make all the throws. The problem is, is that he also misses a lot of throws. And in his last year over at Utah State, he, he missed a lot of short throws that he should have made. So he is somebody who I think is about two years away. I would say he's a, he's a good two years, maybe three years away. I would say he, you could safely say he's about two years away before, you know, you can even think of him becoming a, a quality starting NFL quarterback. So, but, you know, that's, that's the luxury you have now. Uh, you have the luxury of time. 
in developing a player like this because you do have Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers has four more years left on his contract. Now, I don't think he's going to go anywhere for 2020 for sure, and he's probably not going to go anywhere in 2021 just because if he does, there's just a lot of dead money that the Packers are going to have to eat. So financially, it just wouldn't make sense. But, you know, as far as the development of, of, uh, of love is concerned, I, I think Matt LaFleur has a plan for him. I think he's uh, trying to build a, a dominant running game. I think he's trying to build a really good offensive line so that when love does step in, let's say a year, let's say two years from now, three years from now, whenever it is, I think, you know, love will have um, will have the benefit of, of a strong running game, strong blocking. And, you know, th- that should help him develop as, as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Do I think he's going to be the next Patrick Mahomes? No. But, you know, I, I do think that, you know, he's, he, he could be. If, if everything goes according to plan, I do think that, um, that he could develop into a quality starting quarterback because he does have the natural, uh, I should say, skill set uh, that projects, for, you know, for him to become th- that type of player. Now, for the people that say, you know, will Aaron Rodgers mentor him? Is Aaron Rodgers angry? Is Aaron Rodgers sad? Look, it doesn't really matter what Aaron Rodgers thinks. You know, and this whole mentorship thing, I think, is overblown. You know, I think, you know, with quarterbacks especially, they're just concerned about going out and winning games. And Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be anybody's coach. I don't think he's going to treat the kid badly, you know, because he did have some he did have some beef early on with Brett Favre when he got drafted years ago. And I, I'm sure that Aaron Rodgers, you know, doesn't want to mistreat or, uh, you know, just not be uh, accessible to, to the new guy. But I, I do think that, you know, Aaron Rodgers is there to win. Jordan Love is there to learn. And so for people that, you know, are, are making a big thing out of, well, what's Aaron Rodgers going to do or what's he going to think or what's he going to say? doesn't really matter. It's the coaching staff that's going to develop Jordan Love. Now, will Aaron Rodgers give him some tips here and there? I'm sure he will, but it's it's not his job to mentor the, the young guy. We are talking to NFL writer for the Green Bay Packers, Ralph Mancini. I actually like the Jordan Love move, and I actually predicted when I saw Green Bay move up from 30 to 26, I predicted they were going to draft Jordan Love because there were stories coming out of New England that if they didn't, New England was going to draft them in the second round. So I believe on my draft board, Jordan Love was the second best quarterback in this draft. I really did believe it. I I said this from the beginning. I, I Me and Speedy have gone back and forth about this. And, and I believe that Jordan Love has the ability and the growth of what he could be as a quarterback in the NFL to be a great go- quarterback in the future. Uh, what did you think about uh, Devin Funches signing? Uh, wide receiver, good secondary wide receiver. Uh, maybe that was the reason why they didn't go after a wide receiver in a draft. Yeah, I mean, they do have some big young receivers on the team that, that can develop, that do have some potential. Now, as far as Devin Funches goes, I mean, he is somebody, a former second round pick, a converted tight end. He does have the big body, 6'4", 217 pounds uh, or somewhere in that area. But, you know, the, the problem with, with him is, is that he has a tendency of dropping passes. Uh, you take a look at his career catch rate. I believe it's what, maybe 50, maybe 51%. 51%. Rate. 51%. There you go. So, you know, he's it's not somebody who's exactly reliable. But what I'm thinking, the thinking here, I uh, I believe, with, with the Packers in, in signing him is, is that they've done their homework. And when Funches lines up as an inside receiver, he is a much more reliable weapon. He doesn't drop as many passes. Whereas when he plays outside, He's just not the same player. And he's not somebody who's sudden. He's not somebody who is a speed merchant. So I think the plan is going to be using him as an inside receiver or maybe somebody uh, kind of like a quasi tight end. And now the question with a lot of Packer fans on Twitter, especially, is who's going to be the number two guy after Devontae Adams? I firmly believe that's going to be Alan Lazard. He stepped up last season, came out of nowhere hard worker, tough kid, and Aaron Rodgers loves the guy. He earned Aaron Rodgers' trust during the season, and in fact, it was Rodgers who campaigned the coaching staff to put Lazard in, and if you remember back 
during week six and that Monday night game that they should have lost to the Detroit Lions, it was Lazard who really, you know, turned it on and, and really, you know, he, he was one of the main factors in that game in terms of, you know, pulling out a win on Monday night football in week six. So I think it's going to be Alan Lazard, who's the number two guy behind Adams and Funches. I think he'll play a role, but he has to make the team. I don't think anything's going to be given to him. But if they use him the right way, I think Funches can be a productive guy. You talk about the tight ends, and actually the Packers have made a lot of priorities in terms of drafting tight ends, more than we usually see for a team that's been receiver-rich and Aaron Rodgers really doesn't use the tight ends. Do you think that's a a league shift? Do you think that's a Matt LaFleur thing? Why do you think they've done a lot of tight end picks in the third round the last two years? Yeah, well, I I just think that they made some poor decisions. I'm talking about the front office as as far as acquiring tight ends in the past few years. I mean, if you go back a few years, about three or four years ago, they had Jared Cook. And when he was on the field, because he did deal with some injuries, but when he was on the field, Aaron Rodgers loved throwing the ball to Jared Cook. I mean, we could all remember that 2017 playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys where, you know, Cook comes up with that big play that sets up the game winning field goal. But, you know, inexplicably, they, they never they never resigned him. And, and so and. They never really replaced them, quite frankly. You know, we did have uh, J- uh, Jimmy Graham there for a couple of years, but he's basically the shadow of uh, Jimmy Graham in that he's no longer explosive. He's just a big body, and he's one of those catch and fall guys, basically. And so now with Jay Sternberger, he's going to be he's going to be the man. He's going to be the featured tight end. I can't tell you he's going to be the next Jared Cook. I'm not going to tell you he's going to be the next Jermichael Finley, but he does have a lot of ability. And he is versatile because they did use him as an H-back. They used him as a blocker uh, late in the season last year and in the playoffs. So he does have ability, and I think he's going to be the featured guy. So, you know, as a Packers fan, I I hope it works out. And, you know, if he ends up giving you 50 catches for, let's say, five to 600 yards and four to five touchdowns for a young player – I think that's pretty good.